The transfer window can be a little bit of a merry-go-round, really. It's not always completely evident to myself what story to believe, what's believable and what is not believable. Uh, in this instance, in the Dennis Sicaria to West Ham story, I do believe there's something in it. Not because I'm an in ITK, so we ITK in the know. No, I am an NITK. I'm a not in the know. I just got a hunch that I think it's right. Sometimes, you know, I was saying there's no smoke without fire. There's a lot of smoke coming from this particular story. And I think there might be a bit of a blazing inferno at the end of it, which would indicate West Ham are actually going to sign this player. A lot of the news is coming from Italy as well. And... I think that's, that's quite important because a lot of the Italian journalists, they have, well, they've got daily sports newspapers like Gazzetta della Sport. Uh, it's, it's like Marca, isn't it? In Spain, they've got these sports dailies with dedicated journalists who have fabulous links within the clubs, and particularly the big clubs. And you've got to remember Zaccaria's registration is owned by Juventus, despite the fact that he was at Chelsea last season. So when journalists linked closely with the club start giving out not just information, but detailed information, I start to think, OK, there might be something in this. Uh, so I want to go into talk about uh, Dennis Sicaria within this video, uh, what he's good at, what he's bad at. And never let it be said that I don't listen to you guys. Last time I mentioned him in a transfer roundup, a few of you said, hold on, Gonzo, go and have a look at his injury record. So I did. I've had a look. And we'll uh, we'll discuss it here. By the way, it's it's not brilliant, truth be known. Um, what I did find though is uh, there was somebody, there's a couple of people who messaged in the video that I released earlier today, who said actually we don't mind if you just try and tell us what you think's real and what you think's false in terms of information. So even though if we just establish that I am not in the know at all, what I've done is I've compiled something I'm going to use on every transfer story between now until the end of the winter. Probably use it in the winter window as well. I'm going to call it the poppycockometer because I want to know well, my, what my hunch is telling me or whether I think the story is true or whether it's poppycock. So we're going to have a little bit of a sliding scale. It's not a massive scale. It's either complete and utter horseshit. It's the truth. Or if I'm not sure, I'm sitting on the fence. And on this one with Dennis Sicaria, I think there's an element of truth in it. I really do. The reason for that is the details. The devil's in the detail, right? The reports are with Sicaria that both clubs, us and Juventus, have agreed a loan deal. What we're haggling over are the, is the, fi the fine print of the obligation to buy. West Ham have got quite a vague obligation to buy. Juventus would like us to have, a, I think, a more concrete one. Ideally, it's just an absolute obligation to buy. The reasons for doing the deal are clear for both parties. Juventus want the money. He's not played many times for Juventus, as we'll cover in the second part of this video. Um, it's also clear for West Ham. West Ham have got uh, three stage payments from Arsenal. If we can offset the payment of this player for next year, it works out even better. It means we can go and spend some more of Declan Rice's funds on somebody else. And I do think if we sign this player, we'll need another midfielder as well. We'll get to that bit as well. The terms of the deal, I think what we're suggesting is we have a loan and the obligation is if Dennis Sicaria plays whatever, 20 games for us. I don't know what the actual number is. You can understand why Juventus wouldn't want that. Number one, they're probably not confident that he's going to play that number of games because of his injury record. Number two, it could just get to 19 games. If we don't want to buy him, we just don't play him again. So you can understand why that's um, why that would be going on there. Um, it's, it's an interesting player. He was alone at Chelsea and... Um, and once you start looking at his stats and once you start looking at his injury record, you will see that it is not too clever. We'll get to that in just a second. Before we do, I'm delighted to announce that this video is sponsored by the One Football app. They're back. One Football app are back and sponsoring Hammers Chat. And we are absolutely delighted. What I will say before I tell you why you should download the One Football app is we, even when they weren't sponsoring us, we never stopped using it. We always use the app. It is the best football app. And I'll tell you why the One Football app is the best football app is because you can customise it to be the app that you really want. So the only information I want, hey, we've discussed in recent times, we're sick of hearing about Arsenal, right? Don't worry about it. No problem. Don't want to hear about Arsenal. No problem at all. You can pick the clubs, the national teams you want to follow and the competition. So last season, I just followed West Ham, I followed England and I followed the UEFA Europa 
Conference League. Oh, that's such a mouthful, isn't it? I followed that one last season. What it does, it goes around the internet. It finds all of the best stories from the newspapers and the websites and puts them all together, bundles them up and just gives you the ones that you want, delivers them straight to your phone. Best of all, the One Football app is free. You can download it by using the link below. Please do. They'll know you've come from Hammers Chat and we get a nice pat on the head for it as well. It really is a really good app though. If you don't like it, just uninstall it afterwards. It costs you nothing. Let's take a little look at Dennis Sicaria's information, shall we? Let's get to the injury stuff, um, first of all, because that's what really... Um, I think caught, well, caught a lot of people's attention on here. He's played about 300 games and he's 26 years of age. For a 26-year-old, 300 games ain't an awful lot. It has to be said. It's not an awful lot. Um, has he had lots of injuries? Yes, he had lots of small injuries. He's been out for things that have kept him out for 14 days, four days, nine days, five days, six days, 12 days. Yes, he's had those, but he's also had the big one. He's had the medial collateral ligament injury. He's had the knee injury, basically. Um, he has had an injury that, that kept him out for 246 days. He's had other big ones as well. He's had a hamstring injury for 30 odd days. He had a knock, a knock that kept him out for 35 days. Um, he missed, he missed a month. But the only reason they can give is fitness. And uh, he had a tear in the abductor muscle. I don't know what one of those is. I think I used to have an abductor muscle, but someone took it. So he has a lot of these injuries, but he's not the most injury-prone player I've seen. Uh, Kurt Zuma was more injury-prone. But all I would suggest is we, we can't keep buying these injury-prone players, right? I, I think the other thing is, with these injuries, you, you have to factor it in that this can't be just Declan Rice's replacement. Say what you like about Declan Rice and Thomas Suchek as a pairing. Neither of them got injured. They were available all the time. They would play when it was detrimental to them play. They didn't even play when they were knackered. If anything, Moyes didn't rest them enough. But they were always there. They were always available. Almost never injured. That's why when Arsenal fans want to know why they, they, they haven't overpaid for Declan Rice, they're getting a fantastic player who's fit all the time and he's a captain as well. That's the reason. This guy is not Declan Rice's replacement. Now, don't get me wrong. He's a decent player. If you've not seen him play, he, he is decent, right? Uh, he looks like he's physically perfect for the Premier League. He's a big old lump. He's six foot three, six foot four. Uh, he's, he looks pretty athletic. He's pretty quick. When he's, when he's fit, he looks great. He really does. Uh, he's a better passer of the ball than Thomas Suchek. Suchek's six foot three as well. Uh, he's faster than Suchek and um, can travel with a ball a lot better than Suchek. He's a bit clumsy, to be fair. Um... You know, he can get caught with a ball under his feet. But, you know, look, that, that happens with a lot of players like that, doesn't it? You know, with that, that sort of size. Um, but he doesn't, he's not, hasn't got Suchek's fitness. So I think if we were going to get this guy, then we'd have to go and find somebody else as well. I, I think it's as, it's as simple as that, really. Uh, so I think he'd probably be a decent squad player. I think if we had the chance to look at him over a season, he didn't get injured, it might be something we'd want to do. But I mean, he's 26 now. So he's two years younger than Pelinia. He's a lot cheaper than Polina. The, the rumoured fee is 15 million. I'm not sure whether it's euros or pounds. Um, well, that's all right, isn't it? I mean, if you know, that, that's not too bad. It's not too big a outlay. But I think the loan is the right thing. I think it's quite interesting what's going on. Let's just go, um, I'm just going to change here to, uh, to his other page. Just, because he made a big move from Mucho and Gladbach to Juventus. 27 million. He's barely played for Juventus. Barely played. And... So you have to wonder what's happened there. It wasn't all injury either. Looking at the injury record, that wasn't it. And he went out to loan, on loan to Chelsea again. He barely played. Look, that's no re uh, not playing at Chelsea or not doing well last season is no reflection on anyone. We said it recently with Pulisic or, you know, any number of players that have played for Chelsea. They were a basket case of a club last season. So, you know, that's, that's no barometer. It really isn't. But he's just not played an awful lot. But clearly the promise is there. Clearly the potential is there because he went from Moch and Gladbach to Juventus for 27 million euros. All I would say is, I'm not, not the transfer fee. I, I think for 15 million, that's okay. It's, look, what I, would, what I would say is for him at 26 years of age as a Swiss international who's played nearly, he's got nearly 50 caps for Switzerland, I think. You can't really be dealing in potential anymore. We're not. You can't talk about potential with a 26-year-old. From now and the next four years have got to be the best years of his career. He's got to be outstanding. There's no doubt about it. 
He is an outstanding player. I remember him being dis often discussed as one of the best young players coming through in German football. Obviously, uh, from Mutch and Gladbach, that would have been. But he's not a young player anymore. and He's not coming through anymore. So he has to do it absolutely now. I think there's so much detail. The devil's in the detail, as we say, and there's a lot of detail in this story. I think if you're just going to make up a transfer rumour, you just make up a transfer rumour. But for everyone to copy it, and then for a lot of the Italian press to have these fine details about the composition of the obligation to buy and the loan deal, and just the way the deal is structured, I think that's... Um, I think it says quite a lot that there's detail in there. Because you can almost pick any other player who we may have been linked with. Let's, let's go with Alex Scott. Let's go with Alex Scott. We've been linked to him for a little while. You don't hear any rumours about any uh, the details of the, the, the deal, the way the payments are going to be structured. You only really hear that stuff, like with Declan Rice, when a deal is, is actually being discussed. Because there, otherwise there's no details to leak. There, possibly there's no details to leak Look at Harvey Barnes, the Harvey Barnes situation, which we discussed in uh, this morning's video. Maybe, just maybe, there's no details in that because we're not interested at all. Maybe, just maybe, I think it was, um, I think it was, I think it might have been Gary earlier, um, either Gary or, or Jer Jerry in the comments earlier, just that maybe, just maybe that was a smokescreen. Maybe that's Leicester feigning interest uh, to get the price up. Maybe there is no interest from Newcastle. I don't know. I mean, who knows? I've had a look at that since and the South Shields Gazette, which is a big newspaper uh, up in the northeast they they are they ran with a story earlier suggesting that Harvey Barnes was seen at the training ground now they were a bit naughty with the story because they didn't specify which training ground it could have been Leicester's training ground for all I know um but you just don't know there's no details my point is no details in the contract with those the fact that we're getting details in the contract with Zakaria would indicate to me that on the uh, on the poppycock amateur it's um it's reasonably truthful. I wouldn't be surprised if this one happens.